Welcome to Santa Roga Surplus. We're going to start a series right now on the Ruger double action revolvers, specifically the uh, SP 101 series. Here's one in 357, here's one in 9mm, and a GP 100 also in 357. I have a 327 Federal SP 101, which is kind of like my Grail revolver, but um, there's an issue with it, so it's going back for a little bit of customer service. In this series, we're going to do trigger jobs. We're going to replace springs, we're, so we're going to do a full action job. We're going to talk about grips, and uh, as the series goes on, we're going to talk about red dot mounts. Right now, we are going to start with an introduction into the revolvers themselves. So let's come on in, take a look and work on the first parts of disassembly. Okay, first things first, this is a GP100. It has a slightly larger frame, but uh, mostly pretty similar internals. The design is the same, and some parts are interchangeable. Specifically, the hammer spring, I believe, is going to end up being interchangeable with Wolf, as far as Wolf spring kits go. This is an older um, SP-101 from back in the Southport, Connecticut days. Okay, so if you want to remove the grip, generally speaking, you're going to have a screw on the side. Pull the screw out. Then you're going to want to pop one of the plates off. Just a little angle there. Now, one side or the other, you're going to have a little hollow here with a little copper pin, okay? And it is just a pin. It's an assembly pin, which you may or may not end up using when we are doing um, action work. Now, this, this silver piece right here, this is just a block of aluminum, and all that does is hold the, this part of the grip in place. When you push it out, your other panel comes out, and that goes right there. That's what that does. It sits right in there um, and prevents the rubber of the grip from moving around. Okay? Um, that's all there is to it. The GP100 is going to be nearly identical. However, it's going to have a larger um, grip retention pin. We'll get to that here. So I just used the uh, screw to pop the grip out, the grip panel, and then you can use the rod complete the job. Again, you have the disassembly pin sitting in a little spot in the well. And you can see that this is larger. The grip frame itself is larger. And uh, go ahead and pull that out. Now, the grip inserts are going to be the same across the different models. So what, you're, what is different is going to actually be the rubber grip itself and the uh, size of the frame. Whoops. So this is the GP100 frame and the SP101 frame. And you can see the difference. So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the GP100 back together first. Don't forget your little disassembly pin. We're going to go ahead and set this off to the side so we can do a comparison. This is a different uh, aftermarket grip and the mounting screw is down here, okay? And you'll find these occasionally with different models of revolver uh, aftermarket grips. 
And the way it works is there's a piece here that replaces your grip holder, grip support, okay? And that goes in and that gives you a spot for a screw so that you can do a mono grip, okay? Uh, usually that's exactly what you're going to be using is a Hogue mono grip. This is the 9mm version, so you'll see that the cylinder has a cutout, and that cutout is for moon clips. I really do like moon clips. They're something I, I highly approve of. They're very good for rapid reloading. In order to do basic disassembly on the revolver, the first thing to do after you've made sure everything is safe is to pull the hammer back, okay? This is a part where you could use this pin, okay? But I usually use a paper clip or a shepherd's hook or something larger. And what you're doing here is you're trapping, you're trapping the hammer strut, okay? So then, once the hammer is all the way down, you can easily remove the hammer strut and spring. Notice that it does have a direction it goes, okay? You don't want to put it in backwards, okay? The, the angle is going to be, I don't even know how to describe this. There's a letter C on this one that goes onto the right hand side, but there is a more acute angle that goes towards the front. Okay. As you do uh, action work, one of the things you're going to be doing is polishing this bearing surface, because this does rotate. That is step one of disassembly. Now, if you are replacing the hammer spring, what you're going to do is put this into a soft jaw vise, pull this down a little bit. Most people will use a fork so that it doesn't slide off. Um, I use a pair of needle nose pliers. Pull it down so that you can pull your pin out and then this release the spring, replace the spring. That is the easiest, single easiest thing you can do, but I would suggest you not do this unless you're also doing the trigger return spring um, at the same time. The next step to disassembly, th this is your hammer pivot right here. Hammer pivot, okay? After you have removed the spring, you're going to release the hammer. You're going to continue to hold the hammer back, and you're going to remove the hammer pin. Sorry, you're going to hold the trigger back, and you're going to do the uh, hammer pin. Hammer pin is very simple. literally just comes out and then the hammer comes right out. At that point you can release the trigger. Okay, now you have a hammer which also has some bearing surfaces that you're going to be polishing later on in your sear engagement. Um, this is also where you're going to shim, if you're doing an full action job, shim your wobble. Okay, is in here. And we'll get to that right now this video we're just doing disassembly. The trigger guard housing is next and for that you need a thin screwdriver. There's a hole in the back of your frame right here. You're going to push through that hole to push this piece right here in. Once that is pushed in you're going to pry, probably the first time you do this, pry the trigger guard, the trigger housing up. Okay, so that is holding it in. You have to push that in and then you have to make this whole housing lift. This whole housing lift. And most of the time this is very difficult to do um, initially the first time you, that you, you take it apart. So what you're going to want to do is pry. You don't want to pry anywhere here 
this is a fitted surface. But you can get back here, outside of view, in an area where the grip covers, and you can pry a little bit. So I'm going to try to do this without getting onto a vise. Um, a little difficult to do on in a way that can be filmed. There it goes. See, I've I've got just a little bit of play on this one, so it's going to come up, I think, without too much difficulty. So I just just got it loose. And that is your fire control group assembly, your trigger assembly. Okay, that right there, transfer bar. That is your transfer bar. So once you have this out, flip it over, you have some components that you can break down. And we will be breaking those down in another video. Right now, you have a basic disassembly. Um, this is the part where you can now remove your crane arm because what holds it in is going to be this piece here on the fire control group. Okay? There's a bearing surface right here. So that's that. Now you can move the crane arm and your your slide is pr or your frame is pretty well stripped. The only other thing you would want to be doing at that point is working on the firing pin and the um, cylinder latch. And that's not part of an action job, and I'm not going to get into it right now. To put it back together is going to be pretty much the reverse. Okay, it it does go in from this end first, and then it's going to push in. All right, just really a solid firm push. There you are. Your hammer is going to do pretty much the same thing with the trigger held back. You can get your angle in there. Just drop your pin in. It should just drop right in. Okay. Release. There you go. Once you have your pin dropped in, we're going to go ahead and drop the hammer manually. Remember, you don't have a spring. Grab your spring and your hammer strut. Remember, the letter is up and uh, the acute angle is forward. You're going to slide it in there. All right. It just goes right in and then Cocking the hammer will put pressure on the hammer spring and allow you to drop out your little copper pin if you have decided to use a copper pin. And everything is back together. Um, you're ready to reassemble. Put your grip back in. Don't forget your little pin. Don't forget your grip retainer. And that is pretty much that. The GP100 is pretty much the same thing. Um, you know, this video is getting very long. So we're just doing these more or less one component at a time.
and we'll go ahead and move into doing an actual trigger job and that's where we will remove the components of the trigger group.